Citrix NetScaler VPX Get Up and Running Series Introduction. Welcome everyone, my name is Faisal and welcome to another video series from my website itsense.com. In this video series, we will discuss and go through the steps or process of configuring Citrix NetScaler VPX Edition. VPX edition, it's a virtual edition, means it's a virtual appliance that you can run on a hypervisor of your choice. It could be VMware vSphere or Hyper-V or Citrix Sense Server or KVM. The advantage of having VPX, it provides flexibility, although Citrix NetScaler comes in a hardware firm factor as well. You have MPX as well as SDX, and it comes with all sorts of licensing with Platinum Edition as the highest level of license that allows you to enable all the features. Speaking of features, you may you, you may like you may say what type of features Netscaler supports or what exactly Net, Netscaler is. Well, if you don't know Netscaler, then I would say you must visit Citrix website and get a little know-how. But I would like to give you a little, let's say, introduction. So that will make it easy for those people who are not familiar with Netscaler. Netscaler is basically an application delivery controller, or ADC. It has several features, like it has firewall, application layer firewall, which is layer 7. It protects the resources that you publish through it against distributed denial of service attacks and zero day attacks. It's a load balancer and supports several algorithms to balance the load. For example, DNS round robin based on server load or session persistence or SSL session ID. High availability, yes, that scalar can be configured in the cluster as well as in high availability configuration like active standby sort of thing. Cluster yeah, all instance can be active and you have more than two. In highly available configuration, you can have two, one active, one standby. It also has the ability to act as a secure remote access gateway, like it has a full-fledged option that you can configure it as a SSL VPN gateway. It also has the ability that can perform pre-authentication checks. For example, those users who will be connecting using SSL, you want Citrix NetScaler to check their computers for, let's say, for example, if they are running antivirus, a particular version of antivirus. Do they have certain level of patches already applied to it so that they are compliant so they are not a risk to so Citrix NetScaler can do those pre-authentication checks. As far as authentication is concerned, it supports all different sorts of authentication, including your AD integration, local authentication, radius. You can have multiple type of authentication, for example, two-factor authentication as well, and authorization, like after getting authenticated, what they are allowed to access. For example, I may have a contractor, which I am al I'm allowing him to connect through SSL VPN, but I want him to access a couple of intranet websites. That's it. So it can be done using authorization policies. It has the ability to compress the traffic. Your, your server doesn't have to support HTTP compression, so it takes the load off from the server. It has the opt option of optimization or optimizing TCP traffic as well as caching. 
Van acceleration is another feature that it can be used between two net scalar devices. It can accelerate the traffic between two branch offices, let's say. SSL offloading is another option that your Citrix net scalar can offload the SSL. It has two benefits. Number one, it takes a load off from your servers. Server doesn't have to do extra processing for offloading or processing SSL traffic. And second thing, NetScaler can inspect the traffic because if the SSL traffic is passing through NetScaler, NetScaler cannot inspect the contents of the packet. But if NetScaler is doing SSL offloading, so after offloading, those packets can be inspected by SSL by NetScaler and it's a, as I said, it's a application layer firewall and protect against different sort of attacks so it can inspect the product it can inspect those packets and make sure they are not any sort of malware or dangerous gslb global scale load balancing of course it's used by several websites for example a website this has contents all over the world and if you connect session let's say i'm in australia and i establish a session to a website gslb ensures that i connect to the server which can serve me better for example the company may have servers in australia in america of course the servers which are hosted in australia provided they are not overloaded they can serve me better and faster than the servers which are hosted in north america so that's what gslb is it balance the load based on different geographical locations and of course in case of disaster or if one of the sites go down the traffic the, uh, the, the servers which are hosted in other geographical location can also take load e evenly as long as both of well, all sites are running then the loads can be evenly distributed based on geographical locations or different algorithms. So this is what that scalar is. As you can see, it has lots of features. In this course, we will talk about some of them and we'll configure a few of them. And we'll see how it goes. So I'll see you in the next week. Thank you.